Hello game fans and welcome to another interview at Game Anglia. Now today I'm speaking to Lin Lu and she is an um, artist, uh, entrepreneur and she has gone from uh, founding uh, new companies all the way to working for big companies like King. So uh, thank you very much for, for coming today, thank you very much for doing a talk today and um, yeah, thank you very much for, for sitting in this uh, very hot room <laughs> as well. <clears throat> so really uh, to start me off uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about your career to date. Uh, so as I mentioned there, you, you've uh, you've done everything from starting uh, new startups mm. to working for for King, one of the biggest Candy Crush companies in the mm. world. So, yeah. um, can you tell me a little bit about where your sort of artistic journey has has, has come from from leaving mm. university? Uh, yeah, so leaving university. Um, so I guess I was quite lucky because um, when I uh, ended university, um, my kind of portfolio was sort of selected for one of the ten in our course to be showcased at this thing called creative skill set I don't know if you've heard of that mm -hmm, yeah. um, but it's like a kind of networking event and um, we basically were able to show our show reels and things like um, many of us and there I um, met quite a few I guess industry professionals and things um, initially I considered working at an animation company called Blue Zoo, like um, from that creative skill set thing, I got a modelling internship with them. Um, but then I got a kind of uh, also from the creative skill sets. Um, one of the people uh, had looked at my portfolio and kind of um, uh, decided to sort of take me on to the next stages of the process and things um, at a different company. And then they've. Um, they offered me a full-time role there as a 3D artist because at university I actually mainly focused on 3D. I pretty much didn't do 2D at all at university. Um, I only had a really vague background in 2D just from uh, you know doing it at school and things but since then and university I basically only really did 3D. So anyway yeah and then I um, worked at this company for a bit, it, um, it was called Gamesys and essentially um, they they did games but like they also did I suppose like s some things that I wasn't as into like it's gambling games and things like that okay. um, so I worked with them for a while and it was actually uh, a great way to kind of I guess get started in the industry to meet people and things um, because I guess it was a, a great first job in terms of uh, I suppose like a good wage to help you kind of sustain yourself in London and all of that stuff and um, and also to learn more things about 3D uh, while I was there so I, I actually learned I guess sort of how to um, originally I always used Maya at uni and then there I learned Max and things so that was that was really useful and then also while I worked there I was kind of I saw a lot of people um, on the teams were doing like a, a lot of 2D work and I don't know for some reason after a while that got me maybe feeling kind of inspired to do 2D again because I think the reason I never did 2D at university was because most lecturers and things would tell you things like oh 2D is dead like there's no point in ever doing um, 2D again and things so I think that's why I didn't pursue it and focus fully on 3D but then I saw a lot of people were doing this illustrated stuff um, and then I came across uh, King and basically I actually had this kind of contact from King. It was like a, a friend who actually, um, uh, he had actually come into Gamesys to do an interview and then didn't end up working at Gamesys and worked, ended up working at King instead. Um, so I talked to him a little bit and then I, um, while I was at Gamesys, I actually helped a different friend of mine get into King by like kind of recommending her to this person because okay. they because at King they get like recruitment bounty so if it's a good person it's like in the interest to help recruit um, and then she ended up getting the role so um, so yeah basically through that um, I knew a couple of people at King at that point and then I just um, um, uh, I, I sent the guy my portfolio and said okay what do you think and he said things like that he felt like it had good potential but maybe there wasn't enough 2D in it yet so at that point because it was mainly focused on 3D and I did have some 2D but it was quite limited so what I then did was I just like kind of worked really I suppose hard in my own time uh, just really late nights after after work um, you know sometimes to like 3am for like 
uh, months at a time and things or well maybe not too long but like just kind of crunched during a period to try and get together a solid um, 2D portfolio like as in the 2D side to add to the 3D yeah. um, and then I put it together and sent it back to him and um, I guess he seemed kind of impressed so he then forwarded it on and then um, I got contacted to um, interview and things and um, King have a very thorough interview process I'm not sure if you're aware of but they uh, they do like a million interviews so they do they first do a phone interview then they do um, just to kind of get to you then they send you the art test which usually is about like a week's worth of work okay. and then after the art test if you kind of get past the art test they then invite you for like another kind of six interviews and then like um, yeah you basically find out if you got the role <laughs> after the six interviews wow, it's pretty thorough. yeah and the, that includes uh, you know interviewing the um, art director that was in like Stockholm which was kind of like the head art director as well um, so yeah that was kind of the process and we um, they even said like after I joined they even said I think Ricardo the CEO said in some of the um, you know those kind of um, monthly sort of like talks that he did um, I think he even mentioned something like it was like the the percentage comparison had been kind of like almost harder to get in than like Harvard like as it as the way they did it now yeah, sure. um, but yeah so that was quite a intense and I suppose you could probably describe a stressful process <laughs> because it was stretched out really long like it would have kind of been okay if it was like under a week and just everything happened but it was like a lot of waiting and not being sure and I actually had friends that went to that process before got all the way up to the sixth interview and like they still were rejected oh. So it's quite a yeah strenuous process, um, but yeah, I was very lucky to kind of I guess um, be offered the role as a game artist there, and then yeah, it was uh, really great when you know I joined King, learnt a lot of stuff. Um, I mainly joined the team for the game Shuffle Cats. Um, I was actually the first artist on the team for Shuffle Cats, and um, that was uh, quite a big learning experience. Lots of different things. And um, and then for a little bit of time, I also took a break and went on to Farm Heroes for a while. Um, and then uh, with King, essentially, uh, towards my, the end of the period that I had with King, basically I got um, contacted by um, uh, the CEO of my last startup company that was called Truly Social. Um, and then she offered me a kind of uh, lead artist role at that uh, at the Fantastic. startup. And... Uh, I guess there was a number of reasons, but the main reason I decided to, to leave was because um, I guess personally, my personality has always been a bit more suited for like, I guess like a lead slash managerial role because sure. I just like um, kind of getting involved in a bit of everything and I also just like making sure that things are managed kind of efficiently um, and also try making sure as well like nowadays like um, I care a lot about like trying to maintain a good culture where the where teams and things are genuinely happy because I've seen um, a lot of that kind of promises and a lot of that not really ha happening or not really continuing so it's something I feel quite strongly about because I, I believe that if teams are able to work at their best it's when um, they feel like they're having the most kind of genuine fun and like happiness um, you know day to day so um, in order for me to kind of make that level of impact um, it usually requires to be joining at a kind of like a founding level or you know like some kind of lead role because okay. um, yeah that's just where it's easiest to be able to kind of shape that sort of thing um, and then yeah like even when I was at King and at Truly Social I was always involved in things like the um, uh, I guess the social the social side of things so I would always try to do things like um, arrange team events and stuff or like something interesting like I think just before I left King it was actually a tough decision because I just set up a Krav Maga class at King and I was like oh I just set that up like but now I'm leaving so like I don't get to even experience it um, and then yeah and then uh, when I was actually social uh, we did a whole bunch of different team events, like from things like board games, 
at our places to like some cocktail making sessions and like all sorts of things and yeah it was just really fun and like really uh, I, I actually personally like it the most when it's more of that family feel like in a startup so where you can kind of um, you know feel like you're very close to your colleagues mm. and they're all like good friends and things that you can talk about most things with so that's kind of like the environment I enjoy working in mm. the most help shape its future yeah, and, yeah. Mm. Um, and then after that I worked on Lost Words um, with Mark and um, uh, I worked yeah on there as like a kind of freelance art director um, and uh, I kind of helped to do like I guess I tried to keep a sort of overview of everything so like because my personality is sort of it's always got a bit of that kind of like art manageriness to it where um, I like to make sure everything is efficient so I tried to kind of keep an eye on like the art things to make sure that everything that I was doing was you know always delivered and then as well as like the other artists as well I tried to kind of keep a sort of um, keep a sort of tab on it so that like you know we would be aiming towards like we would be able to hit the milestones and stuff um and then yeah while i was working there i then get con got contacted by um uh the ceo of my current company pixie and games and they um they just found me on linkedin and i i guess i actually write a lot of this stuff on li my linkedin like i kind of write what i'm interested in as um what I'm interested in getting involved in in a company like company like things like um you know um building the culture like nurturing the potential in people um you know trying to bring out the best in people and trying to create a very fun um team team dynamic and team culture that is maintained throughout um and uh, surprisingly he actually read that because a lot of people don't <laughs> seem to read those things um but yeah he he read it and then um, he, he said like that it was kind of refreshing to see because I guess maybe not everyone focuses so much on this element of it like I personally care a lot about the people and a lot of people care more about the product or more about just like they have to be skilled or something yeah. and to me sometimes that feels a bit like robotic like I feel like we're kind of humans after all so I kind of care more about that element and um, so yeah, he contacted me and then we got talking and it felt like we had a lot of the uh, quite similar ideas of like how to kind of shape a new company and stuff. And I think that was what I was very excited by because um, it was quite rare for me to meet other people kind of like myself that were as focused on people yeah. and like, and especially, yeah, for like the head of a company, I, I find it's very important to have that. Um, because that then makes it easier for me to kind of be able to be involved in that aspect and try to help people on sometimes even more of like a personal um, side as well as like professional side because I find that all of that stuff feeds in you know if somebody's having like a really terrible time in their personal life they're probably not going to be at their best when delivering professionally and sure. things so yeah so that's pretty much um, where I am at now so yeah, no, it sounds really fascinating, and uh, mm. yeah, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of companies that you go mm. into, and people mm. expect there to be somebody driving the culture and somebody to be mm. driving all the events and the, mm. the get-togethers and stuff. Yeah. But it's never that person. Mm. You know, you need somebody in there to mm. be pushing uh, things forward, uh, mm. and it sounds like you know you're the ideal person for that kind of. <laughs> Uh, a kind of role but yeah. um yeah so d also to go back into the the game art as well mm. um w where do you start and uh, like how how do you um, begin your creative process and then how do you then feed that into your team as well so <coughs> so, so it can be very different per project because i've had a very different starts at like i think almost all of the projects i've been on um so um let me have a think so basically it depends on like the kind of timelines of the project, I suppose. Um, with with the project at King, the timeline was very very relaxed. So it was just a lot of like concepting for quite a long time until you know Star was decided. But um, at somewhere like Truly Social, my first startup, it was kind of like what happened with that was they had already made an initial version of the game, um, but it was like 
the art was very interesting looking, I would say. <laughs> it was very um, outdated and uh, okay. there was some stuff in it that slightly terrified me. Um, so, um, so basically, it, um, yeah, on that project, I kind of almost had to sort of sell the fact that I wanted to make, uh, redefine the style because mm -hmm. I was just like, this style, this is not like going to be a style that is going to work. Um, and uh, I talked to them about that in the interview process and said, you know, is this okay and stuff. But I th they were like, okay, it's fine. But I think they didn't want to change it too much. So um, because of that, like they, they were hoping they could still reuse some of the assets. But because I had to do a sort of sell of like redesigning the whole thing, I had to work very, very quickly. And I pretty much had to had the space of like a few days to just be like, okay, let's just pick the style right now and um, just make something appealing and then just give it to them and be like, let's just change it to this. So that was very fast paced and that was pretty much just like go for some uh, interesting, I don't know, I guess like I, I tried I, I tried to think of like, you know, what, pe what, what people generally see as appealing. So for example, you know, stuff like Pixar and Disney is very big um, and that generally is a uh, appealing to wider audiences because yeah everyone watches that, that you know films and stuff like that so they're quite used to that kind of style so what I sort of did with that um, art style was I took some influence from there but then I also combined it with I guess my own personal art style and kind of generated a style there um, yeah and then um, yeah they seem quite happy with it and the investors and things like um, LVP and like um, Drusilla from Supercell which was one of our investors as well they just seemed um, to like the style and then um, so we just rolled with it I guess um, so that was like in the space of a few days just having to do that so that's very rapid okay. um, and then in terms of uh, I guess like the the actual process that I might go with a bit more if I had a bit more time is probably just to spend like it's still kind of it's still kind of dependent on like the project and the limitations of like timeline and and the goals of like quality and things but i guess i would spend you know um i suppose more time like doing research and and things like that and like finding collecting lots and lots of references to uh get inspired and uh i've actually recently discovered some interesting things to do with creativity as well that i've been trying out and um so um i guess like nowadays i would just try to uh, look at that reference and things and try to first write down or sketch out like as many different ideas and things as possible to sort of show like a broad range and then I might go from there and start kind of like um, figuring out which ones are actually the best and um, narrowing down uh, from there um, but yeah it seems like whenever I join um, any kind of startup things though it's often just like there's not much time to decide on the star so it's just like let's just do this one so I kind of have just got to be like kind of take into account what they want as a brief and things and what our target audience is you know roll that all together and come up with a few ideas and just be like do you like this and it's like <laughs> they're like yeah. you know if they're cool with it then it's just like okay let's just roll with this yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, that's pretty much. Okay, and so that mean. kind of rolls into my next question, where yeah. uh, short time frames. Um, yeah. So what are some of the biggest challenges uh, to sort of uh, upcoming game artists? What are they, what are um, the challenges would they face? I I actually personally don't mind the short time frame too much. Like it's quite nice because I prefer being very busy compared to very not busy. Um, <laughs> because there's a there's a weird. Where there's a weird level of stress that you can feel if you're not doing anything like uh, yeah there's been some situations where I've just there hasn't been enough tasks and it's kind of like well now what do you do so and that's that's um something that yeah I actually don't like as much as if I was just really busy with too much to do so um, in terms of challenges um, I guess it depends on the artist but I would say maybe it's like um, Maybe it's like things like, um, I guess like, yeah, okay, thinking about it in terms of like holistically what I've experienced and seen other artists experience. This, one of the major challenges um, that I've seen over and over again, and this is one of the things I did want to maybe talk about just to, to help people realize this early on, because the earlier you can realize this, 
the more you can get out of your career as a whole. Because this is a major thing that even the majority of the people in the industry that I've uh, worked with or like um, or friends and things, they don't realize is um, people basically like as they stay in the industry for longer, um, there are a lot of artists that have a tendency to get like extremely jaded and um, that can be one of the biggest challenges because if you end up being really jaded and really cynical and really like oh, I don't want to go to work like something that you used to love as like a passion it's like why has it become this and um, it's kind of like often like um, when people face this challenge like they get to such a low point that they, like sometimes they're like oh I don't even know if I want to be an artist anymore like they they question you know whether they even like the industry or like like doing art anymore so I think this is actually a major challenge that people face and it's um, it's something that's brought on by like if they experience say either a toxic environment or if they experience something really bad that's happened like if you know a game that they love gets like canned or if like um, if um, you know something they really really enjoy um, all of a sudden changes for the worst um, they they then can feel like I don't know I guess like kind of crippled by it and what people don't realize is that like um, they don't have to be crippled by it it's it's actually a choice um, it's kind of like yeah it's kind of a crap situation like nobody really wants you know the game they love to get canned and things but it's actually um, it's actually how you look at it that like shapes what it kind of does to you so you can kind of um, get dragged in and then feel jaded and feel oh everything is terrible now like I don't even know if I like my job and things and a lot of people go through that yeah. um, or you can realize that okay this has happened but instead of viewing it as like a crippling failure or a crippling kind of like terrible thing that has like ruined everything you can view it as like okay well this has happened and um, it's probably not going to be great for a little while because like I really cared about that and you know I let that pass but then you can be like well that's a great learning experience you know like the fact that it was canned obviously there were reasons that it happened so there's a lot that I can learn from that and then I can just take that learning into the next thing I'm doing and sometimes you know the fact that something has happened can lead to even greater things happening later sure. um, and it's 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 that and also combined with the fact that you can kind of learn to enjoy uh, any job in some ways um, and a lot of people don't realize this like I have seen artists that have managed to do this and do it very well and so day to day they kind of bounce into work and they're like yes this is great because they even manage to enjoy the most tedious of tasks and if they can do that then they can do anything because um, what I've seen over and over happen to a lot of my friends is like they will just um, or not necessarily friends or colleagues and things where they might just you know do a, a what people would clarify as a boring task which fair enough it is kind of boring but then they will just think oh this is so boring like this is terrible like I'm doing this week on week and then it drags them down and down and down and um, it kind of like I know it kind of often feels like natural for that to happen but it doesn't have to like they could just look at that task like for example that's why for me like I don't actually mind doing uh, a lot of the tedious tasks that other artists would be like oh this is the most boring thing like for example uh, positioning UI or something I know it has to be done um, and it's not something that everyone would jump at doing um, but it's uh, yeah, like I, I just see it as like, okay, well, this is just something to be checked off the list. Like once it's done, it's done and it's quite quick. So you can actually find um, enjoyment out of even these most boring tasks. And the more that people can do that, the more they can get out of their careers because that, that's probably the biggest challenge I've seen. Oh, that's good. That's useful advice as well. Mm. Um, and you mentioned earlier uh, things like LinkedIn. Mm. Um, so what other channels do you use um, to not only... Um, uh, get yourself discovered but mm. also to find work and yeah um <clears throat> so um i guess for me the way i kind of ended up finding work a lot of the time was just through networking so i tend to try to go to a lot of networking events and things um started out with the creative skill set one then i just been to lots of different ones here and there i can't remember the exact names um but i often just you know keep a 
keep a sort of like open eye to meet new different people and um, and just like make friends with people. Like I think uh, I met some people from Space Ape initially um, uh, just through like a game jam that we did with Space Ape and then we got on really well with them and then um, that somehow led to like uh, my partner getting a graphic design role with them because then like they were rec kind of recommended internally so it's just um, you know the more kind of contacts you can have in an industry especially people who might be in recruiting positions um, not necessarily recruiters but like say lead artists or you know um, art directors or just other like people getting in who interview other people um, then you can uh, get a better chance of getting your portfolio seen and all of that stuff. So I would definitely recommend going to lots of networking events and things. And LinkedIn is actually getting better and better at that kind of thing. Okay. Um, like I've been contacted quite a few times on LinkedIn now. Um, so yeah, just having a profile that ref reflects what you're like as a person um, on LinkedIn. I think the most important thing is to be genuine, just to be, you know, what what you're like when you're kind of like the best version of yourself and most comfortable and just sort of um, sh share that on LinkedIn. Okay, uh, and so uh, as an artist and entrepreneur, mm. uh, you're putting yourself out there, you're putting portfolios out there, you're putting mm. yourself out there mm. uh, in terms of putting all your LinkedIn stuff. So um, how do you um, deal with client feedback and uh, criticism mm. of your work? Or, mm. Obviously you've mentioned um, how some artists can become jaded because mm. I mean, Obviously, just when you've created something that you're happy with, to have somebody else go, well, can you make the head bigger, or can you? Can you yeah. So that's a very important part of being an artist because um, I think it's extremely rare for you ever to go into any art job without any feedback or criticism, no matter what role you're at, because um, artists at any level can always continue learning and continue improving. So to never need feedback is like kind of a bizarre thing. So. Um, it's definitely a very important learning to, as early as you can, to be able to learn to appreciate feedback, like kind of see feedback differently. Like, um, I know a lot of artists, and even I used to do this, you know, when I was younger, like, like um, feeling like it was a bit of a personal thing, and it was quite, quite uncomfortable, you know, being criticised so directly, and sometimes it was a bit of an issue with like the way people were criticizing as well like it's not very helpful if someone just says like oh your work's not really looking good it's like you need to you need something to work with you know something a direction to go in um so it's like um it's just kind of like seeing feedback as like just a normal part of the process and kind of expecting it and just being like okay that's cool like now they've come up with a you know another interesting idea that's something I can try out now and kind of practicing that kind of way of thinking about feedback over and over until it becomes the normal way to think about feedback the more you can do that um, the more I guess you can get out of feedback like because then you can really improve from feedback and the less you will experience things of like feeling jaded and stuff yeah. because it's, it's, it's often personal. yeah because it's often not really a personal thing it's just it's just like a team effort so it's like um, you know everyone wants the best for the t game as a team and stuff and still you know obviously there are some times where it's still a bit uncomfortable and things but still you just you've got to kind of find your own ways of um, figuring out how to kind of just like let that go or just like get through that and then just um, sort of shake that off and just be like okay that's cool well what, what can we do to make this better because yeah at the end of the day if you do take on the feedback and you do learn from it and act on it it it's usually ends up being like a better thing and then you get better and better as an artist so okay excellent yeah um and so um obviously we're talking a lot about um yeah. a new uh, game developer is just coming into the industry mm -hmm. uh, they're looking for uh, 3d artists 2d artists mm -hmm. Um, and what would be the best way for an indie developer to approach someone like yourself mm. or to other game artists in the industry? Um, I, I think mainly through things like LinkedIn. Sometimes Twitter is quite popular now as well. Um, I use that a bit less myself um, because LinkedIn is a bit easier with the sort of, sort of professional connecting thing. Um, so yeah, to contact, if you mean just to contact directly, yeah, I would say probably LinkedIn or 
if you were to find people's art station directly and things, you can send and them an email. What would they uh, send? So say, okay, I've got an idea for a game. Mm. Um, at the moment, it's just a lot of sketches mm. um, and I want to get an artist involved. Mm. Uh, do I come to you with a budget first? Do I come to you with uh, all it... my sketches, a brief? How, how, what's um, the best way to, to start a relationship with, a, with an so, artist? So uh, I think it can depend, but like I think as long as you have some kind of solid idea there. Um, uh, I think because personally I'm quite flexible so I'm, I'm interested in even hearing about you know even if an idea is not necessarily that fully formed as long as it's an interesting one but more important to me than anything actually is more the reliability of the person so for example you know they seem like an honest uh, genuine person that would like I guess like See it you know, <laughs> yes, like see it through, and you know, want to uh, think of everyone's best interests. You know, they would definitely, like for example, pay the artist and not try to, uh, you know, try to get like extra things for free or you know that kind of thing. Just, just like someone that seems good to work with um, is kind of core, and then from there, yeah, if they seem like they have an exciting idea and things, um, I think. Yeah, if it's a project that kind of connects with the artist, like for example, uh, for me personally, I quite like things that I suppose have a lot of characters or like um, animals or monsters, you know, that those kind of things, like th those things are quite exciting for me. So yeah, if I hear anything like that, that kind of gets me quite excited to get involved in that kind of thing. Um, whereas maybe if they were to ask me about a game about football, like I would be less into that. So um so yeah, I think it's um, I think it's that like just just kind of um, whoever is approaching, you know, like they want to be kind of like the like honest and kind of uh, committed. Yeah, well. committed and just wanting to be a, a good team member, you know, like um, kind of the way they approach, you know, it be like maybe think about how they might want to be approached and kind of put that in like, like, like think yeah. yeah exactly think think of that and keep that in mind okay so yeah. um i mean you're obviously working on this new startup yeah. at the moment mm -hmm. and um so i'm assuming that you're you're looking to grow and to mm -hmm. take people on yeah. so say there is somebody watching this video or somebody at game mm -hmm. anglia looking to impress you what mm -hmm. how um how would somebody come into to an interview with mm -hmm. yourself and mm -hmm. what kind of qualities do you look for um so um, for me um the major thing is like um personality um because i i believe personally that like okay portfolio and stuff although it is important and you do need a degree of skill it's like even if it's a little bit below the bar i'm fine with that because that can be cultivated in house and like as long as like we help to give the right feedback and stuff you know that can be grown so personality is really key and when i say personality what i mean is like someone who is absolutely um energetic about working in a team um and I mean that as like, you know, I guess they, they have that sense of energy and passion, but also that they that they understand how to do teamwork, like that's essential. So what I mean is like, um, you know, a degree of understanding other people, like understanding how to interact with other people. Um, if you were to boil that down to like simple terms, it's actually just no, knowing how to genuinely be nice to other people. Like you'd be surprised at how um, like not everyone in the industry necessarily knows this as like a key point but it's it's so crucial and even companies like Google like they did um, I think they did research on like tests and things um, to do with what what makes the best teams and I think they did quite a few different tests and it just bo kept boiling down to the fact that the teams were nice to each other and that was it so um, but yeah, this is really more key than people realize because, you know, when you're making a game and stuff, there are times where it is very stressful. There are times where it's crunch and things. And if you're with the team members that are, you know, not compassionate and maybe you're just going to like start shouting at each other or something, that's not that's not going to lead anywhere. That's not going to be the answer. Um, that's all that's going to do is just create more stress. So you need people you know, balances of personalities, but also people that um, know that at the end of the day, you know, their, the fundamental desire is that they, they want to help the team, they want to help other people. And they feel a sense of, um, they feel a genuine sense of 
I guess, um, uh, what's the word, like kind of like, um, they feel like it's rewarding if the team does well and not just themselves. Like, I guess there are some people that come in like, maybe feel a bit egotistical and they're like, okay, I have to do better than everyone else. And that's not really, definitely not what I'm looking for at all because okay. that's not really like a, a team kind of feel. And it's, it's often kind of detrimental to like the team dynamic and stuff. Um, and saying that at the same time, it's also like, you know, the whole thing of like complaining and stuff as well. Like, although I get that, yeah, it's a day to day. Yeah, sometimes people will complain a bit and that's fine, but if people get sucked into the spiral of like complaining over and over and this is something that I've experienced myself and I had to kind of like pull myself out of it yeah. because it's like it doesn't uh, it's like the opposite of productivity it just it just really sucks drags it, yeah, yeah. It sucks the energy out and um, it doesn't result in any solutions so now I'm like very into just like solution focused approaches yeah. and because I'm interested in solution focused um, that's why I look for similar type of people. So yeah. a lot of the people that I've been very impressed by, like um, um, there have been a few people on my previous team um, that yeah really impressed me. Like one one guy was just, you know, and actually he's working with us now because of that. Um, and he yeah, was he, yeah, yeah he just you know <laughs> in some ways like there was a joke where we had where he kind of like emits a calm energy and like it's kind of true he actually does like and that's really nice because he has that calm energy that helps to keep everyone else sort of more Relax. calm in times yeah. of stress and things and it's, it's really important for that because there are things that yeah if it's happening like constantly and things that like stuff trying to make you stress so it's important to have that to balance it out and then also you know he was kind of the type of person that was able to find fun in every single task I ever gave him like literally there was no task that I gave him that he said oh this is so boring <laughs> like he never did that and I was just so impressed by that because I was like wow, you know, if you can do that, then you can do anything. And like, um, obviously I, w I would still try and give him the tasks that are uh, engaging for him and always ask him, you know, what is interesting. But sometimes there are tasks that nobody probably wants to do. Um, but, you know, he managed to find the fun in that. And yeah. it's that type of person for me that is key. Um, and then portfolio is kind of secondary to that. So, okay. um, yeah, that's personally what I'd look for. Yeah. For any team member, artist, game designer, programmer, etc. Like that kind of thing. Oh, well, you've got, um, you're working with a good team at the moment with mm. uh, Lost Words. So yeah. you've got Rihanna Pratchett, uh, Tomb Raider fame, mm. um, writing the words. You've got um, X Lionhead, mm. uh, Mark Backler, and mm. yourself working on the project. Mm. So uh, w what's that been like to work on so far? Yeah, yeah, it's been really cool. It's, it's a different experience because I think that was my first time working solely remotely like myself as well. Um, I'd done some kind of remote outsourcing before where we were in-house and then uh, remotely spoke to and fed back to um, outsourcers. Um, but this was the first time it was completely remote, like pretty much everyone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's been really interesting and like different, interesting to experience the, the different way kind of an indie game uh, deals with things because I guess there's lots of limitations like you know budget and all that stuff so um, we want to I guess we want to get the best quality while doing it as quickly as possible um, and so uh, there, there is like a lot of work and things to do uh, but it's a similar thing I guess like we we just uh, I because I just always keep in mind the whole thing about like trying to make sure that the culture and the general vibe of the the team is like a positive one. Um, so I always try to, you know, um, uh, I guess like as a sort of like manager or someone that gives feedback, I always try to keep in mind to give some positive feedback to people as well, like um, like for the majority of the things that I do, because it is just incredibly important for that um, because people do need to feel a sense of you know what they do is valued and you know get encouraged in that kind of way so I guess I try to do that kind of thing and um, um, try to like e even though we're working remotely you know I try to get to know the other team members have a chat with them and things um, try to see if the things that they're working on you know they're happy with and like you know that sort of thing um, and then like uh, if, if there's anything that they want differently then I try to kind of speak to Mark to sort of slightly accommodate that and things like that um, and uh, yeah there's been some you know uh, 
uh, great people to work with on the team. Yeah, like Mark himself is, um, you know, he uh, he like does a lot of like inspiring things. Like you can tell he really wants to kind of push the quality and things um, of the game. And just like what's come out with the game so far, you know, it's really awesome to see. Yeah, like it's it feels yeah out everywhere. yeah, and then like just. Um, even seeing the vertical slice, it's very rewarding just to see it all kind of come together, how everyone's worked really hard on it, and uh, it's great team effort, I think. Um, so yeah, like, uh, I found that, like, quite, like, uh, quite a different experience, um, in the sense of that, like, um, I was working as a kind of freelance art director on it, but I would say almost my role was a bit more, like, artist slash art manager on it, um, because that's kind of what my personality gravitates towards. Um, on, on the title I did kind of help to define the, um, define the style for uh, the diary part of the game and things. Um, but yeah, actually kind of by being on the project it made me realise actually more that I'm more interested in the art management side than the art direction side. Sure. Um, so yeah, it was uh, oh, okay. really, really interesting. And one question that yeah. I've been asking everyone today um, yeah. as well is, so imagine the scene, um, so yeah. you're just about to receive your first at university, you've, uh, mm. you've, you've done your training, mm. uh, you're just about to go into the industry and then all of a sudden mm. you appear out of nowhere, you as you are now, and then you, can, <laughs> you can just now give yourself yeah. just some sage advice yeah. before you're about to go out into the big wide world. Yeah. What, what would you say to yourself back then? Uh, to get you started in the industry and to, to uh, I would probably say to myself to not bother applying for a master's because <laughs> there was <laughs> one point where I actually uh, before I got off of the job because I was really unsure what was going to happen because sure. when you're just fresh out of uni it's kind of like you don't really know like it's kind of like you just got to get lucky in some ways um, and so I was like okay maybe I could do a master's near London I, w I was going to do one in K Kingston and um, I was like, okay, maybe I could just do that masters and then um, go from there. Uh, but I actually ended up applying for the masters, getting to the into the masters, arranging like to move <laughs> flat and everything to do the masters, and then getting offered the job oh, okay. and then being like, oh, now I'm living in Kingston. Like, <laughs> so because um, I actually moved to a flat that was five minutes from the uni, but ended up being a long commute to get to work in London. So that would be <laughs> one of the major things, yeah. um, and then. I think the second major thing will probably probably be along the lines of practice your 2D earlier on um, because that was something I didn't do because I didn't think it was a thing in the industry like it is true that 2D animation is a little bit tricky to get into in the industry but um, 2D illustration because of like the mobile industry kind of blowing up yeah that is still quite a thing and I guess you can also do concept art and things and I think that will always people who said oh 2D is dead yeah you know just set you off on a whole different path yeah them, so. exactly so I think I would have practiced 2D a lot more um, at uni and that would have helped me maybe look at opportunities and things like at King earlier on um, and also maybe the third thing is also to consider um, yeah like keep an eye out for more studios like startups and things because because actually like I remember I actually got I don't know if it's I got contacted or I just got like um, some kind of like job alerts to do with King rec recruiting um, a year ago like before I actually applied but originally their branding was like really kind of strange and they looked yeah. like a sort of strange gambling company or yeah. something like it was like called king.com and it was like green text and stuff and um, it kind of put me off because like yeah because I, I just like it, I, for some reason like the branding didn't make me trust the company that much um, so but I think looking back I would have been like maybe it's like worth considering even though they might not have the yeah. the sort of perfect just branding in place yet because what I've come across now is like you know there are a lot of stuff like all the stuff that uh, I kind of were involved with, you know, their branding wasn't great and I actually ended up like coming in and helping them change that. So on Force State I actually um, helped with, I guess, like the direction for the logo and stuff and then same with Truly Social, uh, we helped to redo the logo and then uh, now Pixie on Games as well, I just redid that all again. So um, yeah, sometimes like you can actually come in and sort of change that stuff yourself. Um, and I guess just like kind of what I maybe have been talking about already today, like just things of like 
making sure to be flexible, making sure to really um, do well of uh, working in a team and things. And um, the tricky thing was that even at university, my my personality was kind of sort of suited for a little bit of that kind of manager role because even at uni we did a team project. Um, it was like kind of five to ten of us um, and I was sort of like the producer on the team so I, I managed the entire schedule like um, at university, uh, at our uni anyway, our animation course, uh, the, on the, in the third year you just create a film by yourselves and the teachers are just like there you go that's it like we're just gonna give you a deadline of May or June or something and um, that's it, they don't really get involved except for like the occasional feedback sessions, but they don't get involved at all with scheduling. So that's why actually it can be a crazy nightmare of scheduling for some some people's teams and things. So even at the university stage, like, because I was quite suited for that, um, so I was the producer on the team and I kind of structured and scheduled everything. And actually we ended up finishing like, so there's two deadlines, the, the, I think it was the May one and then the June one. and very rarely do people finish by the May one. Most people finish by the June one and are doing all nighters and like pulling their hair out and things. Yeah. That's kind of how it structures <laughs> in the uni a lot of times. Um, but because I'm just so focused on like efficiency and things, like um, I guess I managed to sort of help the team structure in a way that's like um, we actually finished in May and we were able to kind of just relax for that last month and kind of um, refine, yeah, really refine things and things like that. Um, yeah, towards the end, actually, some of the teams were like, oh, we wish we were on your team, you were on, <laughs> on our team to help us, like, you know, plan it better and things, um, because they were doing all-nighters and, like, drinking so much coffee. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like, um, it's just tricky because it's it's really tricky to go, because I really loved that. I really loved that role, because um, it was a mix of art and then kind of management as well. Uh, but it's, it's, like, near impossible to kind of go from... I suppose your university course straight into a role like that because it's management so the tricky thing is most people don't trust I suppose like people who just graduated enough to give them that level of responsibility or to even try it out um, and so it can be tricky especially if you're not doing a sole producer role and you're just doing more of a hybrid like art and uh, manager thing but now I realize that like actually this kind of role is much more likely to occur in things like startups and things because it's more necessary because people wear more hats and things at a time so I would have maybe said to myself to consider looking at startups earlier on but at the same time I do think my experience at King was uh, valuable as well because there was a lot of good learning experiences um, you know learning about like Agile and Scrum and things for the first time sure. and um, just getting familiar with game development, meeting lots of, you know, cool de game developers and like different people um, and getting a sense of what it is like to have company culture in such a huge company as well. Um, so yeah, I, I do value, like even though I would say all of these things, like I think my different experiences that I've been through have kind of led me to what I am now so I do value each of the experiences that I've had like up till now like sure. regardless so um yeah, yeah. Oh, well thank you so much that has been mm -hmm. a truly fascinating talk mm -hmm. thank you very much for taking the time <laughs> to, to take me through it all yeah. uh, and so yes if this video has been useful please uh, like subscribe to the channel and we'll be back with another interview very soon